Thank you, Chairman Grassley. Uh, thank you for holding this hearing. And I'd like to thank both panels of witnesses uh, for your testimony before us today. Um, I had the pleasure of visiting uh, with a number of DREAMers in Delaware earlier this year, uh, DACA recipients uh, who are American in every sense that I understand it, except uh, for a legal status. Uh, and it is my hope uh, that today we can send a message to some of the students who I had the opportunity to meet um, studying at uh, Delaware State University or studying at the University of Delaware or studying elsewhere in my home state, uh, Stephanie Martinez-Gonzalez, uh, who is um, working hard to become a police en enforcement officer, a law enforcement officer, uh, Indira Islas, uh, who wants to be a pediatric oncologist, um, that we support them and that it is possible for them uh, to achieve the American dream. Uh, Ms. Rojas, um, I just wanted to congratulate you uh, on your accomplishments and your dedication to serving others. Um, how did your experience growing up uh, as an undocumented immigrant in the United States influence your decision to become a physician? Mm -hmm. Well, as, as um, being of low income um, and also not having, um, we had very limited access to health care. And so um, my family and I struggled um, in terms of having, being able to see a doctor regularly. Um, uh, so this is something that I was, been in in my family that I saw and also communities around me um, just limited access to health care and also as someone who um, you know is able I was fluent in, in Spanish and um, you know I really connect with um, immigrant communities and other communities as well I feel like um, you know I I just want to be able to um, serve others so that um, people um, in communities are healthy and safe. Um, so I feel like it's, um, you know, the values that my family instilled in me um, to give back um, and to persevere is um, what really brought me to being a doctor. And, um, you know, I only hope to be able to serve. Help me better understand, if you would, um, how your life has changed uh, since the introduction of DACA and how um, your life has changed and, and the lives of others you've gotten to know through the pre-health dreamers program mm -hmm. um, have changed as a result of its uh, current uncertainty. Um, so uh, in terms of the new announcement and um, in, or from uh, gaining DACA, would you clarify at, at what point would you, um, um, how our lives has changed because of DACA or because of this announcement? Both. Okay. <laughs> um, so. Because of DACA, I can truly say in, in every sense I came out of the shadows. Um, I, I feared um, leaving my apartment and um, you know, was always very frightened that maybe I was followed or just, um, you know, I, I lived with a lot of uncertainty um, day to day. And also in terms of my future, um, you know, I was studying at UC Berkeley and um, you know, always um, you know wanted to give back, and yet when I thought about my graduation, I you know wouldn't have employment opportunities. Um, even while in Berkeley, you know, there was internship programs and other programs where um, you know I wanted to apply to, but I couldn't because of my immigration status. Um, so for us um, and so many others, it truly lifted us um, out of the shadows to be able to um, you know live. Um, really almost normal lives in terms of our day-to-day -day lives, but um, I think uh, was an opportunity for us to do, um, participate in programs, um, you know, gain access to job opportunities, um, you know, and, and also, you know, for example, um, buying homes and, and other opportunities that were unreachable. Um, these are things that I never dreamed of um, being able to achieve when I was, um, you know, in, in college and before then. So it, it completely changed our lives and it turned us around. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm so grateful the day that I got my DACA. Um, so this announcement for me was um, really difficult to hear. It, it felt like everything that I had worked towards could just disappear in, in the blink of an eye. Um, and I know for the um, pre-health dreamers uh, community, um, you know, it's so devastating. Now people are wondering, you know, should they apply to graduate programs anymore? You know, sort of you know, being um, at a loss for hope and uncertainty that really is um, pervasive among um, me and, and the community. Um, 
that I know. So it, it's been absolutely devastating. We don't know what's going to happen. Um, and we are really looking towards Congress to find a solution. Thank you, Ms. Rojas. Um, as uh, you've heard from a number of senators on both sides of the aisle today, we really hope we will be able to find our way towards a resolution um, that addresses some of the unsettled issues uh, here that gives some certainty uh, to you and many other dreamers. Uh, I've been a sponsor of the DREAM Act in the past and support it. Thank uh, you. It's my hope that we will find a way to um, negotiate a responsible compromise and embrace the moment here sooner rather than later uh, and move forward and give predictability uh, to folks uh, who hope to and, uh, and already have uh, contributed to the United States and to our future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you.